with your hosts, Not Afraid, Mike Cabs, you will be. Welcome. Another big, 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 big show. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> As usual, the uh, the climate over here in the two hotheads on cannabis studio is uh, filled with energy and electricity. People are buzzing outside. We got the McLovins setting up for uh, later in the show. They'll be playing live and promoting themselves and uh, their performance at the yeah. Lyft Festival. Yeah. Which we're really excited That's about. That's huge. This is a special... We're going to go backwards ...unannounced today deal. On I mean, <laughs> people didn't know they were coming in. <laughs> it's true. This is, uh, this is awesome. We're really, really excited. I, I'm, they're going on last, but I'm announcing them first. So let's, let's announce everyone that's going to be on the show today backwards. Yes. And, uh, oh, yeah, we also have uh, Dick Evans. Yes. Author of the uh, Marijuana Legalization Taxation from Massachusetts, the Marijuana Bill. That's coming up on Tuesday. It's fantastic. I can't wait to talk to Dick Evans. He's, a, he's an old friend from Western Mass, and he's always getting blood boiling out there and making, making, a, making a difference. Yes. And doing it with a smile and a really good sense of humor, and he's a great guy. So yeah, I'm excited he, he, to have him on the show he, today. He's a good speaker, too, and a nice he guy. Is. Yeah, he's, he's definitely great. Uh, who else do we have? Oh, and, and first, yeah. we have Representative Diane Russell from, from the Maine First Campaign. Um, who wants to legalize marijuana in Mass? In uh, sorry, I'm so used to saying legalize marijuana in Massachusetts, in Maine, and we're going to talk to her about that. But I think she wants it legal in Mass too, though. Well, absolutely, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, Maine but was once part Maine of Massachusetts, to, right? Yeah, we're, you know, she, we're sister states. Yeah, I think she, she was here right now. She'd say she wants to get it legal in Maine first because Maine's her state. But. Fair enough. <laughs> but aren't we all part of the same team? Aren't we yes. all indeed family, Mike? Mike can. Well, I think that. I think we are. I think <laughs> that's we are the theme family. of today's show: is we are family, and uh, we're we're gonna. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm I'm, I'm moving towards uh, the conservative, you know, and, and towards my I- ideology. But you know, who I support, Diane Russell, all the way, and she's as far liberal as you can get. So love her. There you love go. Her. I love her. I really do. <laughs> We're going to be talking to Diane a lot about uh, what... We're going to break some new news maybe for a lot of people out there. I think uh, the news might have already broken about something upcoming with Diane with some people in the know, but I don't oh, yeah. think the general public knows yet. And we're going to be announcing some big, big news on State Rep Diane Russell from Maine today. So stay tuned. Hopefully she'll announce it. And how, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And, and how you can out there in the audience can help you know, get involved, how, how we can move this further along. This is what this episode's all about this week. How do we legalize it? We're going to give you ways you can help. Some people have been saying uh, mo- certain movements are dead. I, I don't believe so. I, th- I think this movement is bigger than ever, and uh, we're showing it every week on this Absolutely. show, aren't we? Yeah. I know. People ask, like, is there really that much to talk about of <laughs> regarding weed uh, reform? We don't have enough time. And it's like, hours. yeah, seriously, really? like, we have more and more guests signing up. It's like crazy. <laughs> and then every, there's a new state every week that, you know, confirmed that, you know, it's going to have, you know, we have New Hampshire this week is going to be voting on. Uh, Decrim? Marijuana. Yeah, marijuana. Hey, we don't even get to the news anymore. There's no, so much there's news. There's so much. Before we were like. There's so much. Looking for it, scouring it. Now we're like, look at all this news that we don't even get to. We don't even touch it. It's just so much But we're going to stop talking so that we can talk about the news. Yeah. And, and your phone calls. <laughs> and your feedback. Six one seven. want you to talk to us. 606 What do you want to talk about today? Fast and Furious. Uh, medical marijuana in the state of Massachusetts. The legalization movement going on in Colorado. All these initiatives that are going on. What do you want to talk about? Give us a call and tell us what's going on. And instant feedback at if at unregularradio.com. I don't think uh, that's working again. Oh, is that still down? Don't yeah. Well, okay. you can post on our Facebook page because I'll have it up and, yeah. and I'll be, you know, freakishly refreshing. Two hot heads. Couple of seconds. So <laughs> maybe not, but yeah. <laughs> we'll be listening to uh, and, your feedback. And we're giving Newman last minute requests. I don't know if he can yes. handle this. Newman, <laughs> it's my favorite thing do, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Newman really Less loves than 
one minute to go Newman. on air. Newman. He asked me to find a song. I'm like, dude, get away from me. Newman. I can't talk to you. Right Newman. Newman's been contacting me for like the last two days to get yes, this all straight. Yes, three up. days. Yep. And I've just been like, usually I'll, I, I do. Usually I, I'll deal with it on Friday night. Deal with it. Yeah. Deal with it. I'm like, I'm I'm like I love this with. show. But no. God, this is now three hotheads on fucking Canada. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh Newman's best. Getting today. hotter by the minute. All right, so having said that, we're going to ask Newman. Well, you, want well, you were inspired. The reason why you needed to have this last minute request is because you were inspired. Yeah. Because we need to bring the movement together, right? Yeah. We need to symbolize that we're all in this fight together. We got Dick Evans. We got we go. Diane Russell. We got all these people who are doing amazing work. And the three or four or five or ten hotheads, the yeah. hothead nation. Hothead nation. The hothead nation. We all need Two. to remember hothead that we're nation. all part of the same team. This is about unity. And we are... Family, so that's why the last minute request. And I and think we, that can we, we play should, that uh, song and I then think listen to the that Diane now. Russell clip and get her on the phone and bring her back. Is that that's what we're do gonna that do now? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Can we do it all? Well, we can. We can try. We're gonna try. Let's if it happens. doesn't work, it's my Cam's fault. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> but for now, we are family. Good morning, and thank you for being here. My name is Diane Russell. I represent Mundray Hill in downtown Portland in the main House of Representatives. Thank you for being here. As a lawmaker, I have a responsibility to see and deal with the world as it is and judge public policy on evidence-based analysis. It is with this in mind that today I stand with supporters to kick off the Maine First campaign and formally release LD 1453, an act to legalize and tax marijuana. First and foremost, LD 1453 changes the paradigm of how we look at drug policy. It is time to see these policies through the lens of public health and not through the lens of the criminal justice system. It is time to start treating addiction as a mental health issue and not a criminal justice issue. Painkillers are the drugs killing main people. So why are we spending an estimated $26 million per year in Maine to root out, prosecute, and jail people for the possession and sale of marijuana? Let's channel that money toward the real drugs at the core of our addiction issue in Maine. Second, this bill was designed to protect children. Currently, we have absolutely no control over the marijuana market. In fact, since we have attempted to control the market through prohibition, access to marijuana has increased. As a result, not only is marijuana readily accessible to young people ages 12 to 17, many are even selling it to their friends. This bill creates a regulatory structure to limit access to marijuana for people under the age of 21. There are safe havens around schools, consequences for selling to a minor, and prohibitions against marketing to youth. Many of these components were used to attempt to reduce access to smoking, and while those were being enforced, access to uh, cigarettes diminished for young people. Since we have started away from that, access has, uh, smoking rates have actually increased. Third, this bill would bring in an estimated eight and a half million dollars in new sales tax revenue on commercial sales. This revenue does not account for the new income tax and payroll tax revenue that would be generated when black market operations come onto the books and quote above the table. Our economy is still reeling from the Great Recession. Why are we turning a blind eye to sales and income tax revenue that could be used to make the types of investments we need to build a strong economy? Such investments as in farming, land preservation, weatherization, community policing, and higher education. Fourth, people talk about marijuana being a, quote, gateway drug. Marijuana isn't the gateway. The drug dealer is. If I'm a drug dealer, I want to get you to buy a more expensive product. And if I can get you to try a highly addictive product, I know you'll do anything to get your fix. 
And we have been seeing crime rates increase in Portland as a direct result. So I'm going to give you free samples to try. Or worse, I'm going to lace your marijuana with crack cocaine or heroin to hook you. It's time to get rid of the drug dealer. It's time to eliminate the core product they sell and get drug dealers away from our children once and for all. For decades, this has been viewed by policymakers as a, quote, fringe issue. The red-headed stepchild of the 60s. It is absolutely irresponsible for society to continue burying our heads in the sand and pretending our current policy works. Too much is at stake to continue pretending this is just a joke from the latest Reefer Madness movie. We are in the city that launched the Prohibition era. The Prohibition era failed. The 18th Constitutional Amendment was the only constitutional amendment ever to be repealed in the United States. Let us learn from history this time and not continue repeating it. This is an issue whose time has come. It is time we stop turning otherwise law-abiding people into criminals. It's time we begin taxing marijuana for commercial sale. And it's time we refocus our criminal justice resources toward issues that are truly devastating communities. I look forward to a responsible, thorough, public debate based on real science, real data, evidence-based FreemassMedia.com is a local news and entertainment media team. FreemassMedia.com supports free speech media outlets like Unregular Radio, The THC Show, KOP Productions, and more. Check out FreemassMedia.com for exclusive videos, interviews, and blogs, and connect with Boston's best indie media outlets. FreemassMedia.com is an official sponsor of The THC Show on UnregularRadio.com. Two hotheads on cannabis with Mike Can and Heather Mack on unregularradio.com. Welcome back. That was state rep, main state rep, Diane Russell, speaking on 4-20-2011 for her marijuana legalization bill that she introduced up there. And uh, she, you know, it is our great pleasure to have her back on the show. Let me just uh, talk a little bit about Diane Russell, why I think that she is a great person to have on the show. She's a state rep that is getting things done in the state of Maine and, and, and for our movement. Uh, she's spoken at the Freedom Rally, one of the only elected officials to actually come and speak at the Freedom Rally. She uh, has backed this marijuana legalization bill, and she's been very open and passionate in supporting it. And, and, and this is not her only issue. You know, she's not like a, a kind of one issue candidate. She has all these other issues that she really cares about, more importantly than cannabis. But she's taken the time to spend and, and really promote this cause because she knows it's right. She knows that, that the, the cause is a just cause. And uh, we're very happy to have her on the phone. And hopefully uh, we'll, be, we'll be getting to uh, break some news with Diane that some people already know about. But uh, a lot of you don't yet. Diane, are you on the phone? Um, good to have you. Thanks for having me, Mike. Well, thank you. And I want to introduce you to our new co-host, Heather Mack. Say hello to Heather. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fabulous. It's wonderful to have you on the show. And that was an excellent oh, oh, speech, by the way. <laughs> it really was. I loved everything you, you spoke so clearly and concisely um, and powerfully um, about this is this is the main first campaign, right, that you're a part of? Yeah, um, uh, yes, that's, that's exactly right. I, I think that uh, Maine, Maine started the original prohibition and it ended uh, eventually, and I think that Maine should be the first state in the country to end uh, the war on drugs. Absolutely. If it can't be us, if it can't be us, then we'll have it be you. <laughs> but I was saying, we're kind of like sister states, so we can all share in that victory. And, we're and, together at one time. <laughs> why, why do you think, now, I, I know a little bit, you know, about the political climate in Maine, that it's, you know, it's considered a pretty libertarian state. You guys have both, you know, decrim and medical in your state. 
you, I mean, there's good reason to think that legal will be successful in Maine and the full legalization will be successful. Why do you think, what do you think is, is special about Maine as a state that makes it uniquely poised to, to take that spot as the first state to legalize marijuana? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we have a heck of a lot of woods up here. <laughs> yeah. um, I, mean, I, I mean that quite honestly. Um, Plenty of places to hide. <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of closet marijuana grown uh, in, the, in the big woods throughout the state. And, and you know, it's one of those things where it, it's just so ubiquitous here. Um, you know, if you're against... So I don't really care whether you smoke it or not. It's just, you know, so many people up here do, and, and those who don't just don't care. <laughs> um, and so there's a, obviously a population of people that really do have issue with this, and they believe that it's that it's um, a gateway drug. I don't believe it's a gateway drug. I believe the drug dealer is the gateway. Um, and I also, we're seeing an uptick in uh, in consumption by underage uh, youth in high school because oh wait drug dealers don't card yeah, yeah drug exactly. dealers don't card drug dealers and are often I, kids I think that's an essential point but you're right about Maine being very much a live and let live state uh, we don't particularly you know care to get into other people's business I will tell you one other thing Paul LePage is not reflective of the people of our state. So if you think that he is, I disagree. Um, uh, but I will say that generally speaking, it doesn't matter if you're to the far left or the far right. This is a non-issue. What's interesting, though, is that politicians are terrified of their yeah. constituents on this issue. Wow. They're terrified of voting for it. So we had a, the bill in, and we have 151 members of the legislature of the of the House in Maine. And only 39 people voted for the bill, myself included. But I got so many people that were like, I should have voted for that, or, you know, I wanted to vote, but I'm afraid of my constituents. you got to think of my district. And a lot of people live in rural districts where it's actually, I think, more popular in rural parts of the state than it necessarily is in urban parts. Um, so there's a fear factor with politicians, and I think... You know, I don't like Ron Paul. I, I, I find his economic policies nothing short of frightening. I agree, but, I agree entirely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> Mike, Mike, not so much. This issue, and a lot of people, I think, are listening to, to him, and he's changing the discourse on this issue. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a lot of respect for the man. He's very consistent, um, and he's right on this. He's right on the wars. I just, when you get into the economic policies, it goes really haywire for me because I do believe in the middle class and I don't believe that, that our country was founded on the principles of indivi hyper-individualism. I think we were founded on the principles of interdependence where we all Absolutely. work together and a rising tide rises, raises all ships. Uh, so it's interesting. I, I'm hopeful still that Maine is going to be one of the first states in the country, but at the same time, this this is, you know, the federal government has got to step up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, there's so much money on either side of the fence. Um, Huffington Post a, f a couple months ago did a great report about how violent crime, if you solve a violent crime case, it does not bring that department money or either through um, indirectly through grants, um, being able to quantify how much you, how many violent crimes you've solved. But drug busts do. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So now we're, yeah, now we're seeing people, police departments focusing on busting people for drug use and drug uh, trafficking. <laughs> money and resources. And not violent crime. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That was Judge Jim Gray's whole argument yeah. as well uh, you know, from law enforcement against prohibition. I mean, he saw it as a federal judge. He saw that murder, you know, was, yeah. How was many, being... Mean, Uninvestigated. We, we live in a city <laughs> of Boston that has so many more unsolved murders than solved. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that that should be the hundred percent focus of police. Yep. F getting the those clearance rate has actually dropped significantly since there's been a, ring, a focus on the war on drugs and yeah. and solving murder and solving violent crime 
And violent crime isn't just murder. Yeah, We're exactly. We're talking about rape. Assault. We're talking about assault, yep. muggings at gunpoint. Absolutely. Knife point. Um, and those crimes are not being investigated as aggressively. And I think that's, you know, I care about safety. And furthermore, Absolutely. a significant amount of the crime that's associated with the drug trade isn't the drug consumption, it's the drug sales. And if it were brought out of the black market, we would have control over that. We, um, I serve on the committee in the legislature in Maine that oversees the liquor distribution, and we have a control state. We have a three-tier system, and it's designed to protect the consumer. It's designed to protect the, 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 the uh, person that sells it at point of sale. And it's designed to, you know, to track, control where that alcohol goes. And it allows us to maintain, you know, to keep it out of the hands of kids more effectively, to know where it is, and to know how it's being consumed. And we don't have any control over the drug market. It's in, we have placed an entire black, you know, market in the hands of people who do not share our values yeah. necessarily. And so if you get rid of the drug trade, you get rid of the trade. And then we don't have to fight about who likes guns and who doesn't. Absolutely. D Diane, you, uh, we, we, I actually uh, saw that there was a draft Diane for Congress Facebook page that someone started. <laughs> We've been posting it on our Facebook groups, and I see some of our friends are signing up for it. What's going on? <laughs> what, is, what is going on with draft Diane for Congress? Because we, we, I know I want to see you in the U.S. Congress, and I know there are a lot of other people excited about that. Absolutely. So, what is is that real? What's going on? Well, thank you. Well, I don't have anything to do with that, um, uh, and it seems to be growing slowly. Um, but I will, you know, <laughs> well, uh, early this week. Senator Snow made a surprising uh, turnaround and decided to withdraw and retire from the U.S. Senate. And I gotta say, she has the best exit in decades. She threw down like nobody's business, and she talked very clearly about the breakdown uh, of government. government as a direct result of hyperpartisanship. It is no longer about governing; it is entirely about campaigning 24 hours a day. Yeah. And that is unfortunate, and it's a frustration that I've had. It's a frustration that just about everyone has, and and it's one of the reasons I've been such a huge champion of public financing. In you know, Maine has first public financing system in the country, and it's under attack right now because of Republicans who don't necessarily think that corporations should not control the government. Um, I believe that politicians should answer to their people, to their constituents not to their campaign donors. And you can see what the breakdown in Congress, you know, stems directly back to campaign donations. Um, and so I think with Peter Snow exiting the race, it changed the landscape, you know, overnight. I literally took a nap Tuesday afternoon because I was exhausted. I woke up and the world had changed. I felt like I was in 20 da 28 days later. Yeah. There were no zombies walking around, just politicians. <laughs> we need to occupy Congress. Uh, so uh, there are a number, you know, Ellie Pingree is the, the current uh, congressional, uh, the U.S. Congresswoman from my district for Southern Maine. She is also a co-sponsor of Bonnie Frank's bill uh, to legalize or to end the prohibition on marijuana. Excellent. She has been a huge huge champion for public financing, for women's health, um, just for a number of things. And she, her, her big passion is in agriculture and, and helping to grow um, farms here in Maine. She's been very good at that. Um, and she's thinking very seriously about running for the U.S. Senate. Wow. Um, so there's a, there's a number of folks, myself included, who are uh, thinking about running for her seat. And I am currently collecting um, signatures. We have to get a thousand signatures of, of Maine Democrats in. Yeah! Maine. Yeah! <laughs> yes, I'm collecting signatures. Uh, and there's no guarantee that I made a decision, but unless I can get on the ballot, I don't have a decision to make. So 
Um, and if Hannah, if Shelly Pingree's daughter chooses to run for the seat, I I am not running against Hannah Pingree. But if if she doesn't, uh, we're going to have a serious conversation about whether or not I'm going to run. And I'm I'm leaning toward I'm leaning toward yes. I'm That's just not excellent. there yet. But I am we are so happy. happy. Yeah. Yeah. we're so happy to hear. It you're collecting signatures right now. How many do you need, and when do you need them, and how can people help? Okay, so I need, needed them yesterday. <laughs> um, so the deadline uh, to turn everything into the Secretary of State is March 15th. That is not a long time from now. Wow. And no, if anybody's weeks? ever collected signatures, it is not as glamorous and easy oh, as we all we, know. Uh, we all know the, that. There's four experience. of us who have in the studio. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's not easy at all. Um, however, we need a thousand signatures from Maine Democrats who live in Southern Maine in the congressional district that Shelley currently represents. Um, and so if folks are interested, I will be more than happy to get them petitions. As I always say, many hands make light work. Mm-hmm. Do you have good volunteers um, working is, with you? It's a daunting task and it requires is a real grassroots effort. Uh, thankfully, I I have been in the trenches on so many issues. Uh, last year, we had a people's veto to restore our voting rights in Maine that the Republicans had tried to strip. Uh, I was in the trenches on that, and you know, my I pulled out my old marketing cards from the last term that I, when I ran for office, and uh, <laughs> it's really funny because the marketing card says where there's a slime. Diane's on it. And I got to be honest, I really have been. <laughs> yeah, you have been. So, yeah. I've been in the trenches. Yes, and so that level of, of, of uh, working with volunteers one-on-one and being out there, I have a really strong, loyal base of, okay. of people, uh, and, and they're across the political spectrum. Yeah. As you the should. The other thing I should yeah. mention is that you don't have to be a Democrat to collect signatures, but you do have to be a Democrat. I mean registered voter democrat in order to sign and vote and vote later there are almost no voter in order to collect though are there in massachusetts there's almost no requirements for being a signature collector as i know intimately but is there is that similar in maine as well no maine has um you have to be a may a registered maine oh, voter okay. in order to collect petitions okay but you don't and then you in order to sign the petition and have it count you have to be a registered maine democrat because this is to right. get me on the primary ballot for the Democratic Party. Right, absolutely. Actually, I have a question about um, ballot initiatives. Why, why has, why isn't Maine going the ballot initiative route? Right, because you guys have the option. Uh, you guys allow for ballot initiatives, just like Massachusetts. We do. So, you know, do you I think, think that a lot of that has to do? Um, we we did a ballot initiative, or I didn't. I shouldn't say we. There was a ballot initiative executed. Uh, not too long ago, um, that was specifically around the medical marijuana and the dispensaries. So we've been sort of sorting through um, getting that operational first, and mm-hmm. then I um, I don't know where people are on a ballot initiative at this point. I do have a feeling that folks would probably want to use some piece of my um, my legislation. I mean, my legislation was 45 pages long. So, printing petitions that has a, a law, a bill that's forty-five pages long. That says, I mean, in, in Maine, you have to have the the bill attached to the petition. Yep. Um, so it would have to be seriously narrowed down. Um, I mean, mine thought it, mine dealt with just about anything you could imagine, um, so that it was really thorough. We'd have to have a much more cleaner, simpler piece of legislation to run, and it costs. Money. Money. Yeah, big yeah. money. A lot we of money. Know all about that. Yes. Well, um, another question. Um, we're having a uh, mass marijuana legalization hearing this week, and I know how effective you have been. You, we, even with Shelly Pingree, you, she wasn't always on for that Barney Frank bill until I think you contacted her. Yeah, and, I talked to her directly. And the same with these 39 reps that voted out of 150 for legalization. You definitely have influenced them. What advice can you give the people out there that are looking to influence their state rep, their state senator, Mm -hmm. to support these legalization bills, especially at the hearings on Tuesday in Massachusetts. How should we dress? How should we act? How should we talk to... What what have you found to be most effective, Diane? Well, 
All right. Well, I'll tell you the the most effective thing that I did was to have, and I hate to say it, and every everyone that's listening is going to think I'm a classist and elitist, but I am going to be dead honest. I was not a member of the committee. The committee was very clear: do not show up with patchouli oil. Show up in a suit and tie. Absolutely. Put your hair up if you have long hair. And and I've said to everyone, dress as if you're going to Sunday school. Yeah. Um, caught. <laughs> because you, it's like the civil rights era. You know, the, part of the reason um, the civil rights era was the marches were so effective is that everybody literally dressed up like they were going to Sunday school. They took themselves seriously and they forced others to take them seriously. When I walked in that door, I had everyone in that room was dressed in a suit and a tie and a, or a skirt, and it stunned the committee. Uh, the other thing is, I ha- I put together a binder of information, uh, a very thorough binder, and I knew the sponsor, everything that was in there, and people would ask me questions and put me on the spot, and I would say, oh, yes, if you look at section, you know, C you'll see there's a report that identifies that, and on page X, here's the information. So every time someone tried to put me on the spot, I had an answer, and I had the facts, and I made a binder for every single member of that committee. Uh, And it was actually referenced on the floor of the House, that binder, because it was so thorough. Complete. Um, And I took it so seriously and forced everyone else to. And everybody joked about it. I mean, I'll tell you, it was the most exciting. Um, everybody was looking forward to this uh, to this floor debate. In the end, the floor debate wasn't all that exciting because not many people spoke on it. But um, everybody was really looking forward to it, even if they weren't going to vote for it, because they really respected the work that went into it, the conversation that was had. And it's a fun topic. Yeah. Uh, and, and politicians... You know, you see them on TV, you see them in the paper. You know, when we're in the state house, we do laugh. You know, we have a good time. We make jokes. And yeah. yes, this can be a funny topic behind closed doors. <laughs> and I will spare you all the stories that I heard. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to hear them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm not going to point them out. Not going to go there. There is some levity to it that just goes with it. Um, it does not mean that it is not a serious topic, and it certainly does not mean that it should not be taken seriously. Um, and I think the success that I had, which wasn't much, I mean, 39 out of 151 is, is very good. Um, but people respected the work that went into it, and I still, to this day, hear from people saying, you know, I should have voted with you. You were right. Yeah. So that's, and if, you, if you don't take the, the issue seriously, and if you don't take yourself seriously, no one else is going to. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And we have got to change the debate. Yeah. And you've got to be, you know, you've got to go where people are. You know, people really are afraid that this is going to hurt children. And they need to understand that this actually helps get it out of the hands of children. Absolutely. I, I, I think too many people miss that children are often the dealers. That's I mean beyond yes. children you know that the dealers don't card we've turned children into dealers you know, we, yes, children very aren't very dealing viable economic yeah. option I mean children aren't dealing cigarettes children aren't dealing alcohol they're dealing in marijuana yep. I mean they that, are it's true and we need to be able and that is because we have no system to track where that marijuana is every ounce of alcohol is tracked in our state why can't we have a system like that in marijuana or that you're able to grow your own and have it at home? If you're a responsible adult, you know, if you're of age, you should be able to grow it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, you, you are responsible for keeping it away from the child. And if something happens with that child because you were irresponsible, you then get you in get trouble as an adult. It, yeah. Just like right, alcohol. There are consequences for giving your child alcohol yep. or for giving your, friend, your child's friend alcohol. Exactly. You've got to be able to be a responsible adult. You know, I think um, Steve Blue, maybe it was, or someone else said it best. Um, the freedom to choose, the responsibility to choose well. Absolutely. Agree one If only, I mean, that's just, it's so practical and it's so logical. And every time we, you know, we talk about it on our show, I'm just blown away. And we're so glad to have people like you and allies in yeah. the government that we can really trust and, and count on and know is going to, you know, support logic and reason over 
you know, lies, <laughs> basically. Yeah, well, and the other thing that you need to do, everybody knows that this is going to change eventually, but the other thing you need to do is you've got to get your base to call, and I don't mean email or, or call the office, I mean call that person and get them on the phone, that politician, and say, I support this bill. I want you to as well. It gives politicians the cover they need if they hear from their constituents. If they don't hear from their constituents, then they're not going to be able to, to make the choice that more people want them to make. And furthermore, whoever's sponsoring this bill needs to get a House and, a, and hopefully a vote. We did not have a Senate vote. I think I would have fared pretty well in the Senate. Um, but we need a House vote because you need to get people on the record. Even if it's as bad of a vote as I had, which is 39 of 151, you've got to make sure that you have... Um, that you take the time and get people on the record. That, because that, then, yeah. afterward, their co- constituents can can say, why didn't you vote for this? You know what I mean? So that's really important. That's been our issue in Mass, is that we have these hearings, and there's a Democratic... Uh, constituency that runs the state house it's a very you know massachusetts i think is very um i don't know how to say this it's very concentrated the power the speakers really run everything and if the speaker and his couple of people don't like your cause they have not let it come to vote we have never had decrim medical it hasn't happened as long as i've been doing this it happened maybe in wells administration when it passed medical and mass through the state house but Year after year after year, they don't let it come out of these committees. They vote it down. I just uh, well, and that's something that you you've got to hold the members accountable. Yeah, how, I mean that's 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 where we're at. We have to get these uh, members to to let it be voted on. That I agree one hundred percent. We need to get them on the record. That is so important. Well, listen, I hate to cut this short, um, <laughs> because I love the conversation. We, but yeah. I'm actually in Brunswick at a. Uh, my mom's friend's house, and she is going to collect signatures for me, and I need uh, to get her petition. Yes, for you need to get the signatures. That's wonderful. Let's hear it for Diane. Let's Thank give you her so round. much. And one, one last thing, Diane. How can people collect the signatures? How can, again, directly contact you on Facebook? Is there a website somewhere they can reach out to um, you? If they-, if they can just email me, that would be best. And my email address is dianerussell207 at gmail.com. That's D I A N E R U S S E L L two zero seven at gmail dot com. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you so All much, right. Diane. We appreciate everything you're doing for the movement. Well, thank and for you. Me. And if he wants to help, I would just use the help to get on the ballot. Yeah, we definitely please, please, if you're in Maine, even if you're in Mass, if you get up there and help Diane. It's not that long of a ride. It's right over the border. It's like a half hour. So Collect signatures. <laughs> okay. There it is. Pull in Maine? <laughs> oh, from like the Maine registered voter. Yeah. yeah, you have to be oh, a yeah, Maine registered voter. Oh, yeah, you have to be registered. You, can, yeah. you yeah. can come up and help, but only uh, collect if you're a registered Maine voter. Right. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs> I almost broke the rules there, didn't I? I know, we did. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> no one will know well, that. Well, Massachusetts is really unique in that. Yeah, a lot of other can. states have, have, I mean, there's only, actually, Alex can weigh in on this. How many states uh, allow for ballot initiatives? 22. 22 states. Only 22 states 22. in the whole United States allow for direct democracy. And, and how, many in, how many in New England? Is this two? Two. Yep, so, yeah. just us in Maine. But um, there's only three states on the East Coast that have ballot initiatives. What's the other one? Florida. 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 What? Yeah. Oh wow! I'm gonna be going to Florida. We're gonna do Speaking some work in wish. Florida. We yeah. have, we have Esteban's down in Florida. Oh, Esteban. maybe I'll run into him. And I'm he, gonna be interviewing yeah. Spring Break uh, drunk bros and asking them about marijuana legalization. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> for kidding. The show. Uh, for the show. So that's in a few with, weeks. With your phone. When I, I'm going <laughs> on Spring Break. Yeah. You're gonna be on a radio show. It's it's um, gonna be great. We um. What was I going to say? Oh, Florida. We might have a couple of big guests coming up from Florida. Oh, really? And and their laws are draconian. And to hear I'm that they have terrified. an initiative process, mm. that gives me some hope for them. They, Florida, you got a chance. you got an initiative process. I'm a little process. scared about going down there with how draconian. Oh, they're bad. If you, if you get caught buying weed on the street, oh, I'm not. You, th- you, that's like a felony. Like, you know, like they, they are brutal. What about smoking? Uh, if weed. you get busted, you're going to be you're gonna be in some world of hurt. Okay. Don't let me, get busted down uh, there. I'm not getting uh, busted. Florida's like Mexico. Florida, they smoke a lot of weed down there. Oh, uh, they do? Yeah. They do. Uh, it's, it's 
A lot of drugs is a big drug yeah. capital, Miami. Yeah, yeah well, Cotton specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, they got a lot of pot, and then it's not any community down there that doesn't have it. Uh, the tourists are the only ones that bring it in. Uh, they got. I used to go to a place in Coconut Grove called Honey for the Bear, and they had pot all over <laughs> there. They had other drugs there, but they, they had got pot it all. Everywhere. Florida. Honey yeah. How do we get on Florida when I we try to know. wrap up with Diane Russell? I know. A seriously. valid initiative to Simpson. Well, that would be great if they had a valid initiative in Florida, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know, passed it in the next few weeks. Weeks before yeah. I go down there and start smoking a bunch of weed and we, we get do. myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful. Yeah, I don't right. want to be doing a bail fund on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> that'd be no. rough. Frog, that'd be rough. Frog, but I can host. rely on my hothead nation, right? Oh, we will and bail you out. Especially, really. To we'd write everybody. letters. We'd make phone calls. Exactly. <laughs> Free Heather. Free Heather Mac. <laughs> make T-shirts. Oh yeah. Um, but that was a great call with Diane. That was awesome. We're getting back to Diane. Yep. Yeah, and we're talking. All all today is dedicated to real live marijuana legalization movements that are going on. And this is right important now. too. Like what she's doing right in now in the legislature. Running for Congress. She, <laughs> she she's a state rep. She's taken our cause and she's been the front run. You know, she's been the the person that's really held our flag. We need to support her. We need to show people that she could take the next step with our support. You, Gather signatures. There's a Facebook group. You saw it. It's on our. I believe it's on our two hotheads. It is. Send it around. Post it on your own Facebook page. Send it to your friends. You got any Democrats friends? Post it and say, "Hey, this is someone you should support. I really like this person because Diane Russell is. We we really need to support her. Yeah. Can't say it enough. <laughs> now, I'm supporting Ron Paul. So come on. <laughs> yeah, she had some. I, I, you know, I agree with her perspective on Ron Paul. That I, I was, I was happy to hear another, you know, a like-minded politician that's not completely. We don't have to agree on everything. I love the what? No, I love what she said about interdependence, though. And I, and I mm. wonder, you know, if especially with a state like Maine, is it, you know, what kind of interdependence can you get when everything is surrounded by woods? And how, <laughs> how close, you know, yeah. can you really get? But I mean, we're all, we all depend on each other, right? That's. We are family. Oh, here we go. <laughs> your we brother, your sister, and we me. We need to work together. That's, that's, All right. That's what we're talking about. Six one seven six zero six four one two two. If you uh, want to weigh in, you know what to do. Post it on our Facebook group or give us a call. We yes. we want some interaction today. Call us. Yeah. We're, we're fun. We're yeah. fun and quirky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll play your dubstep track. Call us back. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that guy? That was classic. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's been What are we coming back? We got to have some music. And uh, and then we got Dick Evans. And Dick Evans. Who's also trying to legalize marijuana in the state of Massachusetts. We uh, got the latest one from DJ Slim. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we hear from Willie. And then we have some Chaka Khan. Then we're back with Dick Evans. Your attention, please. Radio Unleashed on regularradio.com. 